only played it once, but no, always time to go back to it. Seems like that that is the case. Plus having that flexibility technically, even though now on 11-5, we've primarily seen her stick to that bot lane. Usually it's the matchup of Tristana into Kai'Sa, Tristana into Kalista in some players' hands. So we'll see what LWX wants to take into it. I mean, LWX is also a famous Lucian player. We haven't seen it work out successfully. Oh, yeah, too. I don't think I want to see him play Lucian, but with LWX, anything's possible. I would still expect him to go towards the Kai'Sa. Again, it's still, I'd say, the premier AD carry pick. Tristana has risen up alongside of it. I love that you mentioned the flexibility because it can be played mid, also can be played top from what Xiaohu showed us. <laughs> when he played it really well, too, into that Gnar. That would be an interesting matchup if we see maybe an early Gnar pick for no, agree into that top lane. Maybe, maybe that's what they want to do for Chalitza. Says one. like, hey, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. No, it seems like it, Lilia is more likely the option. And you know, for people wondering why I'm saying Sejuani, Xiaopeng has played Sejuani four times a split. I'm pretty sure every time it was against the Udyr, 75% win rate was, on it. was, if I remember. Yep, do love to see that, but instead gonna go back towards a more meta pick, bringing out the Lilia. We do know Xiaopeng's Lilia is nothing to be scoffed at. And for TT, I expect him to keep going down the rabbit hole of bot lane. Look for an all-in engaged champion here. They do lock in the Alistar, save those soul lanes for four or five. You mentioned it earlier, Twyla is very flexible. And then Chalitza has, I'd say, a solid core of champions he's fine going back to. As Nar is going to be taken and immediately answered with a Jace Fan 2 from FPX. Not wanting to have any counter matchups in that top side that could possibly make it difficult for Nuggery to be able to get those early leads so that he can carve out his own path. He doesn't need any help from his team to get resources. The thing is, there's two expected answers I'd have from Chalitza, which is Camille or Irelia. So now banning out the Irelia, unless he just wants to, you know, accept, hey, I'm going to lose lane. We're going to play for bot side and go for, you know, maybe a Scion or an Orn, some kind of tank. If he wants to go for the skill matchup, he can bring out the Camille. You will have mixed damage uh, jungle top. And he's played it four times. He's won three of them. And that's also into uh, Nuggery. Not necessarily going to be an easy matchup. It would be a great statement for Miss TT top laner for Chalitze to try to take into here and try to be able to win out. But I'm, I'm kind of figuring that it's going to be a tank that they might want to be able to grab for themselves. An additional front line. It's kind of like what we saw with LGD earlier where you try to draft yourself a pretty easy to execute composition. Now FPX locking in the Nautilus. I don't think it has the greatest time against the Alistar. Like you have more pressure than him at level one and two, but at the same time, it's you never really want to engage on him. He provides more engage, more disengage. Obviously once you hit level six, you're never gonna be able to kill him. Can always also headbutt pulverize onto your AD carry, so. But, ooh, we actually get TT ooh. answering with the Wukong. So this lane is going to provide him a lot of all-in potential at level 6. Theoretically, if you can play around the level 1 correctly, uh, get into melee range, you can try to find an optimal trade for you early on to go in. And also a set coming out from Twyla. Can I just say I'm a little upset that Xiaofang's out on that uh, Sejuani now. I talked about the double melee top and mid and not getting Xiaofang's counter in to Udyr. It would have been so fun to see that, but going for instead something that can function as that front line, the stride breaker set that you sometimes see mid lane, but it is going to be into someone who is trying to rotate around the map constantly, trying to always be in the right place, right time, well before Twyla what usually is the one doing that for the side of TT. Yeah, and I'll go back to TT real quick and say, I do think even though the Sejuani would have been fun, the Lilia fits better. If you had the Sejuani, your, dam your comp would probably be too low damage, but I still very fun composition, right? Set all about just kind of ignoring the enemy mid laner, clearing waves with your Haymaker. Again, Shalitza, I think, is going to have a tougher time. Uh, he's going to get bullied by the Gnar. He's going to have to look for a lot of all-in windows. I think Xiaopeng is going to have to be around the top lane quite a bit and make sure they find that advantage. Where for FPX, I think you're just chilling until level 6 and then looking to incorporate to be more with the map. I'd like to see him put more attention up towards the top side and help get Nugger an advantage and really just take this Wukong out of the game. Get the Goon Squad, head up top side with Beige Fawn, with Goon B, so that always, always you're pressuring top side of the map. And normally where they don't play around Nuggery, this time might be the game to do so.
and I love how excited Doonby just looked there laughing. He is ready to play. He's back on the Twisted Fate. Him and Beitron have an, an extremely strong mid-jungle 2v2. You can very easily set up for ganks in the mid lane with your gold card, but we know Set is uh, a pretty durable boy. You know what I'm also excited yes. for is to hear the Jios for FPX, because we know they are always incredibly loud. As we get ready for game one between FPX and TT, let's try to see if we can listen into that crowd and see their excitement getting ready. I don't hear it. We're, we're getting Give me the there, crowd. We're getting there. We're getting Give me the onto crowd. Summoner's Rift. FPX up against TT. The true barn burner that we were all waiting for. Though I use that term very loosely. I got what I wanted. That's exactly what I wanted. I've been waiting for it. I just love how they even draw Crisp's apathetic look that he always has on his face in the doodle. Because that's always what Crisp looks like. His, his facial expression is always indifferent, and I love it. You know what? That's... Honestly, that's more intimidating than, you know, having an angry face, if you ask me. Just indifference can be far more terrifying. It can, and ooh, we're seeing Shalitza to go for what we talked about. Finding these trades at level one, you can chunk Nuggery's health out, give you better situations for once you hit level two, starting to look for all-ins. One thing I do want to highlight is that Shao Peng took Dark Harvest. I think it makes sense from the traditional phase rush that we see because, again, he's trying to be a main damage dealer on the squad. Bruiser up in the top in mid lane. He needs to be able to output massive damage in these team fights. Goes for that rune. Changing things up for the side of TT. I do like that, especially if you're trying to see if you can compete against base one. Always trying to be able to rotate since you know that early on it's going to be an Udyr centric farming fest. But right now, bot lane. A bit surprised to see how much damage was dealt over to SamD. But this is also that Kaisa Nautilus bot lane where they try to get that level two experience lead over their competition so that no no matter what Sam D does, he can't step up to the minions. And that's the thing, right? Nautilus Kaisa is a traditional brawl lane. Nautilus helping her get that uh, extra proc of her passive. And everyone knows Alistar is not really a champion at level one. Nice hook coming out from Crisp to set up that trade. And we're starting to see what, what we'd expect early on. Uh, Shalitza actually did a really good job at level 1, zone Nuggery off the wave, so he was actually able to get the push. Now it's going to go back into his side, FPX winning bot lane, and Set just being a nuisance in mid lane, where again, he could just haymaker the wave, he's going to heal up with his passive, going to be not really able to do too much against him. And that's why we also see, right, Unsealed Spellbook on the Twisted Fate, much more about the utility he brings later on in the game and in these team fights. And we talked earlier about how the current mid lane AP build is usually just with Everfrost, and that's probably what Doonby is going to do in this game. Be that secondary lockdown potential that they already have with Udyr, they're going to be able to have with Crisp, and having Doonby doing the same. That they always will be able to keep these people who normally would be able to move around a lot, like Xiao Pong at bay. I mean, that's the thing, right? Once he gets Everfrost, and later on into the game, when he also gets Rapid Fire Cannon, the active from Glue. Wait, though. Ooh, wait a minute. LWX losing out in the 2v1. Sure, the kill goes over to Xiao Pong, but he was just in the right place, right time to get the kill credit for first blood. Yeah, we didn't even really get to see how that one started off, but this goes back to TT's bot lane. Sam, D, and Teen have been stepping up in a lot of series. They've actually found numerous 2v2 kills, and FPX's bot lane have been hit or miss. I think they've had some games where they've performed phenomenally, and others where they're just they're just not on the money. Flash pull comes out from the Alistar, forcing the flash from LWX. Sam D able to follow up, gets the uh, the hits off on his bomb with the W, able to jump once again. They secure the kill. And I actually like that Xiao Pong is the one to get that kill. Dark Harvest, as you had mentioned before, getting these stacks early is going to be great. But oh no, this is not looking good topside. Nice dodge with the decoy to barely stay alive for Chilitze. And we didn't we didn't get to really see Oh god, wait. Oh uh -oh. god, Nuggery surrounded. He's going to be able to juke them though. That's the thing. He's trying to see if he can juke them. He noticed they were there. It's knocked back in with pulverized. Try to get that damage, but unfortunately, was just in range for the turret. So Teen takes him down. 
What did TT have for breakfast? Because they are absolutely popping off in this first five minutes. I like how Nuggery played with his bounce back wave, right? Because we saw Chalitza push that one in very early on. Nuggery's wave slowly bouncing back, stacking up. Chalitza can't trade with him in that minion wave. It looks like Nuggery was hitting a lot of his boomerangs, playing with his autos. He has a grasp of the Undying, which he can proc pretty frequently as he tries to stop the recall, but isn't able to. But yeah, Nuggery had good wave management and good play around that. Just... TT with a really smart read and bringing Teen up towards the top side. I, and this is why we talked about how when it, TT started off the split, it was exciting to see how they're going to do. And here, they're continuing to be exciting. They get the flash out of H1, and they could keep this fight going if they really want to with Chilita nearby. He doesn't have Cyclone, but the Spider-Man of Prime Crisp is not going to be able to keep him safe, so Chilita will take him down. This roaming death squad is great to see. And again, I give so much credit to Teen. It's amazing to see him linking up with Xiao Peng, playing as this two-man unit. Chalitza TP's in. I don't really think he needs to, but he's there for the moral support. He didn't lose anything topside, if you see. Nuggery hasn't pushed in that wave yet. And TT turned all of that into a dragon. You've impacted all lanes in the first five minutes. Oh, Teen! Where'd you come from? Where'd you go? And where did LWX go? What creative pathing? This is honestly not what I expected at all. Like, sure, FPX, you're locked into playoffs, but that's not when you take your foot off the gas pedal. That's when, you know, things start getting serious. Just honestly, bravo to TT and TT on, the, on the opposite side. Like, TT aren't technically knocked out yet. Again, we none of us no. expect them to make it. They have a tough schedule okay. to do it, but... Oh, this TP in from Twilight's disengage Luan B and Nuggery from going for and completing that dive onto Chalitza. I was about to say it's level six time for Twisted Fate. He's destiny gating it up, and Twilight was quick on the draw to say, no, thank you. We're, in, we're not losing this tempo lead that we already have. The thing, though, is now Nuggery has an advantage in the top side of the map. He's going to continue his push. So Baytron will have a window to play around. I don't know if they can dive Chalitza because Chalitza Dove does have his ultimate. It looks like they were trying to time it perfectly because he was still level 5 as Baytron was moving up, but at least they have a, a point of prio they can start playing around. And the thing about TT's comp is as it gets later on into the game, right, it's all dependent on Sandy and Xiaopeng. Everyone else is a meat shield, though I do think Tristana and Lilia are two very great champions if they are going to be your soul damage dealers. I've still got my eyes on Teen, though. He's got the Moby Boots now, so moving around the map is going to be far easier for him to get everywhere possible. And so far, that has been a lot of how TT have been able to get this lead in this early game. Sure, it's not a massive gold lead, but it's enough to be able to make plays like this on a Nuggery, even though he does try to hop, skip, and jump away. About to go Mega, so they have to be careful with this. Even with the little thing lullaby, Beishwan showing up nearby, makes it so they are disengaged. Gotta be careful with how low they got. Nuggery going to go to sleep for the time being. The Prance not gonna get enough, but that's gonna be able to do it for Chalitza taking down at Nuggery and scaring off Beishwan so they can get a second kill for Wukong. And Xiaopeng is just everywhere. Nuggery not able to find what he was looking for. And I feel like in this matchup, you're not going to be able to get too much until you get Stride Breaker. You get the passive that grants you movement speed when you when you land damage. You also get the Mythic passive where other legendaries give you movement speed. I feel like he's really going to need that to be able to go up against Chalitza adequately and really be able to play around these ganks well. So, you know, it was a bit of greed coming out from Nuggery, but at the same time, only a 1.1k gold lead, which, it, you know, is actually a lot less than you would expect with how this game has looked for the last 10 minutes. Especially with five kills on the board for the side of TT. No, you know what? It's still only, it's still only nine minutes into the game here, Lyric. We're really early on into this, so even a thousand gold is a pretty good lead as Twilight is trying to see if he can stop the take of the Rift Herald. But in the meanwhile, and a dive is attempted by TT, getting a lot of damage. Buster shot over the wall for LWX, trying to be able to get the Goomba stuff, but that was a lot of damage that came in from LWX with Destiny Gate open just to make sure there's no escape for Sam D. Dean and Sam D, unfortunately, they got a little too cocky in this play in the bot lane, and you're gonna get executed for it. Just waiting it out. That's the dredge line kill given over to Doan B. I love seeing the, the confidence, the mojo from the play for TT, but, you know, we see the Buster Shot come out. It pushes LWX back. Crisp is able to just go stand next to him, play a bit of a zoning role. Heal comes out for LWX. And now, Teen's already used his combo. Even if he was next to Sam D, I don't think it would really make a difference, but 
like you said, just getting a little bit too ahead of themselves with the advantage they had. But still, I mean, I feel like it's better to take opportunities than to miss opportunities, right? Agreed. I agree with you. It's You gotta sometimes risk it for the biscuit if you want to be able to win the games. And there, didn't work out so well. So maybe Teen, as he's doing right now with those Moby Boots, trying to travel to places unknown. What else can he see across the rift besides just hanging out bot lane with Sam D? We did see Baytron pick up the Rift Herald. Sure, Twyla tried to stop him earlier on, but actually, Xiaopang was on the bottom side of the map clearing his red buff. Clear the engage comes out, headbutt pulverize. Nice flash from LWX, so when he gets buster shotted, he's actually over the wall. And Sam D was tanking turret shots in that as well, like we just saw. Heal from LWX. Team nowhere he can go. Gold card from uh, Doing B after he comes in with a destiny. And now he's just guaranteed to go down. And you can see on your mini map, Beichuan just picked up the Herald, making his way on the map as well. And now FPX having more available options to them. And the gold lead is completely gone from TT. Yeah, a bit too early. 14 as well. Only level 5 when they attempted that dime. So they do lose out a bit. But it looks like they might have a pick on Crips. He has the flash over the wall to be able to survive. Beichuan is nearby. Okay, no, it does seem like TT will be able to back off that one, just go for the objective. I like that coming out from them. FPX not even going to contest. Remember, they still have the Rift Herald. TT, though, now do have two Drake, so if they can pick up that next one, they're at least threatening Soul, which will be nice for them. Ooh, especially with Mountain Soul coming in, you, you do have three tanks on your squad, so I think it'll be really tough for FPX if they are able to manage to pick up those next two mountains. <laughs> Chris is like, something doesn't feel right. I don't like this bot lane situation. Able to at least get LWX back into lane, escort them towards those minions so that they're not losing too much out on that side of the map. But here's the Destiny Gate play. Beishwan topside with that Rift Herald to be able to try to punish. Shalit say underneath the turret, even with the Cyclone play to try to clear out the minion waves, not really going to work out. First turret going over to FPX. You know, and wait, that was a nice response wait. play. Oh, wait. What's happening to bot lane? Hello, Chris, but that's not looking so good for you. Even with an exhaust, Twyla is here. He might just be able to punch you, but instead they're going to give the kill to Xiao Pong. Should be a trade of turrets. Ooh, though, FPX able to get two. I was going to say, because TT actually started this play first, right? We saw TT hovering right. and zoning off FPX's bot lane. FPX were a bit late on pulling the trigger topside, in my opinion, with, with having that information. No but way. But it, it doesn't matter. Okay, they're going to get a third charge off. I feel like... FPX got way too much for this still, though. Right! I mean, you at least got more gold onto your Tristana and your Lilia, but definitely, I mean, it just feels pointless for me to say, yeah, FPX benefiting off this trade. It, what they did, and that's the thing. It's like, I think that's why you and I are a little confused on this one. It's three full charges from Shelly in the top lane. But let's take a look at the spot lane play, this dive that it's it just... Finally, the right timing for TT, as you can see, with level 6 for T. Yeah, I mean, especially with the fact that Pung was here this time, so when LWX tries to get away, he jumps right into the Lily. A nice W into the Q coming out from him. Passive still burning him down. Twyla is here. I was trying to look for a window if Twyla didn't need to be here so he can go and look to protect top lane, but it does look like he was probably needed to zone off Chris. Though, they, don't, they didn't necessarily need to kill Chris. I think you can probably make an argument it would have been better for Twyla just to go top side and defend that inner turret, buy more time for Chalitza to come up. But, you know, we still get a trade. It's still even in gold. And now yeah. Xiaopeng sitting on 3-0-2 on the Solilia. That's the one thing here, is well, sure, two turrets fell in the top side. You're able to get a lot of the gold in the bot lane, especially on Sam D, as you had mentioned prior, making it so that this gold still stays even for the two teams. While some of the plates can be picked up by LWX, I like that they're trying to get Sam D gold elsewhere. They're sending a mid lane, saying, hey, let's make these plays, try to keep this Tristana rolling ahead of LWX's Kaisa. And I, I feel like there's one thing that's very telling in this game is the... Uh the mythic we see coming out from Nuggery. Because Nuggery actually went for the Divine Sunder over the Stride Breakers. Xiaopong. 
Nice flash. Ooh, loping lullaby though. Gonna be able to catch him out of position, giving more gold over to Sam D, even with Bear Slap. It just really didn't help out. They're gonna use the showmaking in the back line to be able to draw him away. Twilight takes him down, tried to chase on his own. Be gold card to slow him down, but the Twirl Seed was able to at least get the flash out of him. Nurgri is about to be able to go Omega, so they gotta be a little bit more careful in the fight, even though Doenby was able to go gold. Huge Nar ult underneath the turret, but Doenby is gone, and Nurgri doesn't have a team to be able to back him up, so Sam D is able to get uh, crazy with the resets and survive. TT are so in sync on these team fights. Everyone is pulling the trigger at the same time. I love it. Xiao Punk goes in on the Beichuan. Team goes over the wall. Sam D uses his W to rocket jump over. Twyla's already there. Chalitza comes in. It's just so nice to see. It's so unexpected. And I know that, uh, Kelsey Moser is definitely happy with this game, looking at Chao Fung and how how much he's doing on this map. And when we look at this replay, I feel like it's just great execution from TT. Yeah, we see the the uh, sleep comes out from Lilia. They just take out Beichuan right away. They lock down Kristen Well, who, who comes a bit too far forward. Twyla keeps going in. We see more swirl seats coming up from Shopung. And this flash right here from Teen is so clutch to lock doing me into place. Followed with Chalitza's ultimate, locks him in. And it doesn't matter if the Star ultimate hits because all the members of TT are already here. Teen's already cutting off your escape path and you're able to just finish off wiping out FPX in the skirmish. The surprising part is gold is still even. Huh. Ain't that a thing. I mean, that is, that's definitely interesting. It, it comes when we look at the CS numbers, right? First of all, you have a Twisted Fate on the Rift, so he's getting more gold by default. And Nuggery, as Teen Ooh. goes in again... I like these flanks from Teen every single time. Vaishwan never being able to read it, even though they have Nuggery here. Again with the flank, could look for the Nar ult. Just going to be able to get the root onto Teen, try to see if they can throw the boulder at Twyla. Get him low, but not enough. Unfortunately, they have to fail out of the fight. The turret does not have uh, any standing left in there, so they have to back out. So again, just more aggressive coming out from TT, and now they are going to be on soul point once they take this Mountain Drake. They just keep accelerating the pace of the game, and this is always the thing I love out of lower tier teams, and this is why it's kind of funny, because a few weeks ago, me and Munchables coined TT are the new Rogue Warriors, because TT had a few games in a row where they looked like 2020 Rogue Warriors, where they were very proactive, they were very bloody, they always looked for the fight, and then a couple series later, they kind of slowed it down. So I'm happy that we're seeing them come back in, pushing the pace of the game, Xiaopong making plays all over the map, Twyla onto a roaming champion, and this is what you want to see, especially when you're playing up against top teams. Make it more, you know, make it make it more dynamic in the game. Even if it's a bit more of a, a coin flip, even if you are putting yourself in more tough situations, like we saw with the 2v2 in bot lane, you can get a nice lead and actually find a potential win. Oh, my eyes are on teen, honestly, this game. You're you're praising Chao Fong and Twyla and Sam D, but Teen. Oh no, I think has Teen been... has been insane. He's been blowing my mind with these flanks. They are incredible. Yeah, I think I think Teen Teen has easily been the standout member, especially I think compared to expectations where Teen has been good in lane off split, but the fact that Teen is absolutely popping off, finding these clutch engages is amazing. LWX flashes out of it, but he's still able to lock down Bei Chuan, and then the rest of the members are just here. Again, Xiaopong so massive right now, has a ton of damage, but Teen continuing to zone off as we see on the screen, already Again, another fight coming team. out. They're trying to focus the Alistar. That ain't how it works. Getting drawn back in, and look at the showstopper to take down LWX. No way to be able to get that. And somehow a solo kill happens off screen. Nuggery lost that one, so that means FPX. There's nothing to fall back to with the double kill coming mid lane for Sam D. And it's just unfortunate. FPX getting punished for their mistake in the mid lane. Nuggery going down in a 1v1. We were going to talk about mythic items earlier, but I do feel like going for the uh, Stride Breaker would be more useful for him in that extended laning phase. Is Beitron's getting caught out again, or is Xiaopong getting is caught he? out? I was about to say, it's a two level discrepancy between the two. Beitron did a lot of damage back in the phase of Xiaopong to be able to scare him away and not be able to actually try to aggress for the turret. We've had one kill a minute. 19 minutes, 19 <laughs> kills. That's what we like My to see. My kind of game. And now, uh, in terms of items, I think a lot of TT's members are sitting on good points. We're going to see the replay come in. F Nuggery actually the one looking for the dive. Tries to go with the stun, misses. Has to ult him away. Is 
both charges of the ultimate do come through and again he's stacking up his passive the whole time getting all of that armor that wukong does provide and nuggery not really able to get anything out of it man unfortunate timing on the minning r2 barely but had it been a little bit longer on Mega, he might have actually been able to win that just with enough of the tanky stats that you kept from him. But when he went mini, it was an easy cleanup for which lead say to take that 1v1. But now looking at the map of what FPX want to do. Normally, it's all about the early game for them. But here, they have to play into this mid game. A position that we've seen FPX play. If you think back to their series against RA, where a lot of those games ended up going pretty late. They struggled. They didn't look nearly as clean. Similar kind of thing that we have to now imagine for them in this game. The great thing for TT is, again, they're the ones on an easier comp this time around. They're on the pure 5v5 yep. composition. They group up. They're the nice Italian meatball this game magical. It is fine for them. <laughs> FPX have the harder time because they need right. to be playing for picks. They need to be using the Destiny. Nuggery needs to be getting an advantage in the side lane, not be getting solo killed, playing around that, moving first like he did do now because he's playing off to the flank. And TT might get punished get for this. Game. Keep your eyes on Nuggery. Team's like a rabbit dog right now. You just sick him on your opponents. Just like, go get him, team. Well, team has been doing great, but... They're not going to get punished for this play. I'm surprised they didn't want to bring in the Destiny and have Nuggery going on the flank. We need to note that Chalitza does have teleport, so it would have been a 5v5, but FPX would at least have, you know, maybe a slight window where they can try to get a numbers advantage. But instead, going to play back, going to farm up. Dragon's up in 40 seconds. FPX can't keep waiting. And again, ideally, their comp needs to find a pick. They need to create action before the dragon actually spawns, but we're already at the point where TT are grouping up as a five-man unit. They seem afraid. That seems like it's the problem for FBX right now. They're playing scared, not confident with themselves. Uh, the thing is, I feel like I feel like FPX, I feel like doing me always has confidence. Definitely don't think it's a lack of confidence, but I definitely think it comes down to their composition not really having a great window of what to do. You need someone on TT to overstep, or you need Nuggery to find some kind of massive five-man ultimate, which, you know, that's your opponent making a mistake. That's not necessarily you creating that window. I like TT mm -hmm. just sticking together and going straight onto the dragon. Well, Destiny Gate has been opened up this time just to be able to get a little vision onto the dragon. They cannot give up the soul. Try to use the gold card, but it is going to be secured by Xiao Pong into the back lane. They go team was able to get a huge knock up, and there goes LWX. Even Crisp trying to see if he can do the same, but he just cannot replicate team success, even with an R ult into the wall. They might have gotten the kill onto Lilia. Minogri tried to be able to escape, flashing away to be able to escape as the rest are getting chased down by FPX trying to run away. The flash comes in. That's what you need. Sam D is on a rampage. He's insane. And only one survives for FPX. That's not going to work out. Where were you when TT completely styled on FPX? 19 kills to 5, 4 dragons, getting a Baron. It just feels insane. I love it. You know, this is the kind of late season shenaniganery that I subscribe to, that I'm here for. Uh, you already know my philosophy on rooting for the underdogs, and that doesn't change here with TT as they get themselves this Baron. You know what? Screw it. I'm all in. I'm all in. TT, TT yes, go to playoffs. We've got we're, him. <laughs> we're getting on, we're getting on this hype trade. T, we're, we're all in on TT. Wait a minute. Buy the stocks no, on no, TT. No. Wait a minute. The caster curse. No, no. We got it. Run it back. I don't want to curse this. This is this is too good to be true. Hey, if anything, TT fans should be excited because I, I well, actually we're gonna see the replay first. So I don't think there's okay. much to tell. TT were on the objective first. Great ultimate coming out from Chalice and look at Teen. Two man knockup. FPX are separated. Chris was on a completely opposite side from his AD carry, who's already dead. For Nuggery, it's too late. He wasn't able to find a good window to like get on and lock numerous members of TT down, forced to run away. And I mean, now it's easy pickings for TT. They just come out ahead in this fight. But going back to my point earlier, Magical, I have this habit. Whoa! Oh, wait, wait, we're hold on, hold on. we gotta put it on pause because we got lifting all of our ears. FBX finally pulled the trigger, but is it too late? Even with the kill on Sam D, keep an eye on how they're ripping apart the back line. Vaishwan trying to be able to escape, but they're gonna be able to get the double knock if they need to with the Cyclone. Nuggery not gonna be even our yet just yet. He's away from the fight, and Dorby is getting styled on by Xiao Pong, taking him down. Nuggery flashed in with the face breaker, trying to use the Nar to be able to escape. But Teen has got his number. They've secured the fight they need to, even with the hop, skip, and jump away. It's the show. Stopper race coming in from TT. And TT are just going to be able to take this push into a win. 
that they are. I am here for it. I love seeing this. TT, they fire back game one. They looked at what happened yesterday with Team W and OMG, said, hold my beer, I got this one. We're gonna take down FBX in this game one. They've got it in the bag. It's the Nexus soon to fall, maybe even patting their KDAs along the way, but they've got it. And that was such a surprise. Let's remember, coming into this game, coming out of champ select, Doombie's smiling, Doombie's laughing, Doombie's happy. He's in a good mood. He's happy with their composition. You can see the way it works out, and now no smiles on the side of FPX. No one. Okay, TT, wait. TT, though. Don't, don't be still smiling. He always smiles. But TT, yes, talk to me about TT. I just, I just like the way they played this game. It was so, it was so interesting to see. They come out with this, this draft, right? Picking Wukong and Dinar, which I'm not so sure is going to work out. We do see that it does get Pryo uh, the first few waves because of how we played off that level one. But we saw Nuggery doing fine in terms of CS, abusing him when we did come out on top at one point where, like, we saw the Wukong was like 20% HP, Nuggery's full health. But then TT got some kills bot side. Xiaopeng is there. Xiaopeng moves top side. They get some more kills. They punish Nuggery a little bit. Then it's all about the bottom side, right? We see Twyla. We see Teen. We see Xiaopeng. We see SamD consistently going in, diving bot turret, starting skirmishes in the river, punishing Beitron when he's looking for invades. And they just never took their foot off the gas pedals, which is what I loved. They never gave FPX a chance to breathe. They never gave FPX, FPX a chance to formulate a game plan to come back. And then with FPX's comp, you can't 5v5 in TT. It's all about finding uh, picks on side lanes or using Nuggery's pressure to rotate first. But, like, TT didn't even really give them a chance to do that. No. And so before we do go to a break, I, normally, you know, we save the MVP for later. But I want to just ask your opinion. Who would you give it to uh, between Xiaopong and between Teen? I, I feel like those two are the members that I really have my eyes on for it. Oh, uh, that is such a tough question because I don't feel like you can do it without, like, I feel like both of them were so instrumental to this win. Right? I honestly don't know who you pick. I'm excited to see the damage graph because I have a feeling Xiaopong's probably the highest one on it. But obviously, Team was I the one setting a, so. a lot of the stuff up. I, I like. I'm pretty sure, based off the build, you kind of already highlighted the Dark Harvest Lilia, since that's who they were indexing to to be that AP carry for the team. So I'm expecting just with how Lilia works that that is. Yep. So it is going to be that Xiaopong has the most damage. Actually, I'm surprised at how little Sam D had. I'm not too surprised because. Like, sure, Sam D was involved in a lot of the action, but at the same time, we saw a lot of FPX members just get outright burst. And, like, you look at the other champions, right? Set has more upfront burst. Wukong bringing upfront burst. Sure, Tristana has some upfront burst, obviously being able to, you know, come in with the explosion and then your W, but I still don't think it's as high as what uh, Xiaopeng's would be. And then Chalitza was involved in a lot of back and forth trading just in the top side by himself. Look at Dean's damage. That's my thing. It's like, sure, you can say, oh, Chris has more damage than Beige Vaughn, but it's the fact that you have an Alstar that has 2,000 more damage than your set mid lane, but also is not that far behind both Sam D and Shalitza. Can we have a, a dual MVP? Is that a thing? I, I don't know, think this it's is a thing. a hard one. That's like, this. I, I don't envy whoever's deciding this one because I, I see arguments for both Xiaopong and Teen. You know, I guess ultimately it doesn't matter all too much. But yeah, what matters more is if that if TT can replicate this. And, you know, even if it turns out a 2-1, that's fine. But if they could 2-0 FPX, that is absolutely Dude. crazy. That'd be wild. I, again, totally here for it because I like my upsets. I That's what I root for more than anything is I don't have a bias towards team. I have a bias towards fun, entertaining League of Legends and Cinderella stories. That That's what I love. But I kind of want to talk about how maybe TT might be able to replicate this into the next game because if FPX are able to figure that out, that might be their way to stop them. So what would you do as TT to try to replicate it? The thing is, I don't think there's an easy way to say because I feel like this was such a niche draft. It's not something you can just run back without, like, FPX adjusting their own draft. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we'll have to keep that in mind then because we're going to toss it to a break. When we come back, we'll figure out who the MVP is. We'll get into game two between FPX and TT. But with it being 1-0 favorite to TT, 